So really pleased to be able to get to the point where we can announce a provisional calendar for 2020. Uh, it's taken a lot of work and uh, uh, consideration, but uh, we've plotted a restart point on the 7th, 8th, 9th of August, and we're gonna kick off at Donington Park uh, in the East Midlands, uh, and then a couple of weeks later, roll into Snetterton on August 23rd, uh, then onto Silverstone, September 6th, uh, then Alton Park, September 20, Donington again, but this time on the GP circuit configuration on the uh, 4th of October, and then finish at the traditional Brands Grand Prix final round on the 18th of October. All the weekend's gonna feature three Bennett's British Superbike races, so we're gonna have an 18 round uh, championship, uh, which is obviously still lots and lots of races, uh, a little less than the 27 that we would have in a regular season. And as a result of that, it will just be a straightforward point scoring series of races. So there'll be no showdown in the 2020 version of the championship. Uh, the circuits that we've chosen, uh, five circuits, uh, obviously some key emissions there and we know uh, obviously we've got lots of fans all around the country and they'll be uh, obviously wondering why. Very simply, we've had to consider very, very detailed at uh, all levels the practical, logistical and the financial consequences that COVID-19 has, has meant for, for us, the circuits, the teams. And where there's a, a regional or an on-site uh, challenge that we think will be uh, insurmountable, uh, we parked those circuits for this year. So uh, it's nothing personal. They're going to be back on the 2021 season. Uh, but, you know, if I just take Knock Hill as an example, uh, it takes uh, an extra day to get there and an extra day to, to come home. A lot of people in a regular season would uh, car share, uh, truck share, uh, a lot of um, additional sleeping arrangements. Uh, and we just don't know if that's going to be possible. Uh, Thruxton down in uh, the southwest of the UK, uh, it's the fastest circuit in the UK, but as a consequence, we have to bring more safety protection into that event than we do for any other round of the championship. That material comes from our own stock, uh, other circuits in the UK, and also, would you believe, from uh, uh, the Northwest 200 organisers in, in Northern Ireland. So the logistical challenges of bringing all that material over for an event that you know, has some doubt whether it could take place is something that we, we, we just can't do. Similarly, Assen in Holland, um, with the quarantine questions, uh, we certainly don't want to be travelling outside of the UK. And again, the distance to and from the event makes that an event that would be uh, too much of a burden on our teams. And then the one that I'm sure will uh, cause uh, a lot of concern, uh, Cadwell Park. Quite simply, Cadwell, the jewel of the crown of the season. It's the, uh, the weekend where the championship really celebrates the party in the park. But anyone who's been to Cadwell would know uh, from a logistical point of view, it has the biggest challenge of the season. We have to operate with two pit lanes. There's a big migration of teams from the top pit lane down to the bottom pit lane. Tented pit garages, just 19 tented pit garages that have to cope with uh, all the superbike teams. And you simply can't do what's expected now with the social distancing and all the uh, more cautious procedures that we've got to uh, put in place. It simply wouldn't work at Cadwell uh, for that reason. But we're doing what we're doing to give the best opportunity to de deliver a credible championship and allow us to put in all the operational detail that's going to allow us to safely run. Well, there's a whole host. I mean, we're having to identify everything from the moment someone sets off to a race, um, understanding how people can travel to, to the event, how they will be checked into an event, how they'll be hosted at an event in terms of how the paddock will be laid out, pit garages, uh, all the operational detail. I mean, a, a typical race event will have, you know, many hundreds, if not tipping over a thousand people from the, the paddock community. And of course, our marshals and our medical services. It's a three-day event. Obviously, we've got to look at all the, the incoming uh, rules and regulations and guidelines that we think will cover how to handle camping, for example. We think this will uh, unravel uh, in the early part of July as part of a broader uh, easing of the regulations from that, that sector. And then just how you run races. Obviously, uh, everyone's been to races. They see great huddles of people in the paddock and the pit lane. Our, our concept and looking at other sports and how other sectors are managing this is, is to create lots of different cells, be it the, the individual teams, individual groups of marshals, uh, the, the media that will be authorised, uh, some of the service companies, and all those cells need to be uh, self-controlled uh, self 
uh, away from the other cell. Uh, and that's going to take a lot of detail, making sure the cells don't uh, bump, bump into each other. But uh, a lot of that's being worked up and um, we're now seeing other motorsport events take place across the, um, uh, the, the globe. We saw the Moto America series take place a couple of weeks back and uh, there's been NASCAR and IndyCar races taking place. So. We've been looking around, we've got relationships with all these people, understanding how they've been doing it, how they're applying their safety modeling. And it is a constant work in progress. So um, a long way to go, but uh, you'll see visually some differences, I'm sure. For example, uh, the starting procedure, we won't have great clumps of people and uh, uh, six or seven people around a bike and umbrellas and everything like that. You know, I think we'll use the quick start procedure, so it'll be uh, a very streamlined procedure. At the end of races, it's gonna be quite strange. There won't be that great huddle in part Ferme and uh, people kissing the winner. Um, so there'll be the visual things that people will see that will change, but uh, yeah, it is work in progress and uh, you know, we just have to do what we have to do. Well, again, it's this uh, evolving situation. Um, you know, I'm an internal optimist and uh, you know, I think when parts of the hospitality, leisure and tourism sector start to open up, there's a pretty strong case that says, for example, Brands Hatch, uh, a, a 400 acre rural venue, uh, has to be treated somewhat differently to a uh, 30,000 urban stadium for a sport where people will typically arrive and leave by public transport and drink in all the bars around a stadium, like in, in, in soccer, for example. So um, I think there's a strong case that says that, you know, there should be some form of spectator emission. Uh, uh, that's obviously not confirmed yet, but uh, we hope that will be the case, that there will be some acceptance that we can host uh, spectators. Bennett's British Arts is all about spectators, and, um, you know, that's what we're aiming for. Well, I'd say for anyone who's in possession of a ticket, I'd direct them all to the relevant circuit or circuit groups website because that will be the, the, the point of uh, transaction and how that will be handled. In some cases, uh, the circuits aren't actually open or that many of their functions aren't open just yet. Uh, so there may be a, a little delay in that. But the basic principle is if you're in possession of a valid event ticket for a postponed event, uh, if you can make the postponed event, the ticket is perfectly valid. However, if you cannot make that event uh, and or the event is ultimately cancelled totally, uh, then there would be a, a refund uh, issue. That's um, you know, standard trading terms uh, that applies for everything. In some cases, I think the option will also be offered if you want to still keep the, the ticket uh, for some validity into 2021, but that's a, a question for the, the relevant circuit and that, that will be detailed on their relevant website or social sites. With regards to all the broadcast coverage, we're constantly talking to our principal broadcaster, which is Eurosport. Obviously, a key point in keeping the events on the original calendar schedule was to absolutely ensure that we've got the broadcast um, output because a lot of sport is being rescheduled. And if we started changing things at the same time, it wouldn't have been impossible to have a situation where uh, you just have too many events on the same day with too many contracted sporting events all searching for the, the same coverage. So the fact that we're on our regular uh, dates means that uh, we've got the, uh, the the content secured. Obviously, uh, the Saturday of every single round is going to have a Bennett's BSB race, so that'll be factored in uh, as well as qualifying. And uh, it was always the plan to try and extend some of the weekend coverage with covering uh, the Saturday morning free practice, um, either on Linear TV or the, the, the Eurosport player, for example. But as well as that, uh, we have free-to-air uh, coverage of the championship or Wednesdays after the event on ITV4, also on Discovery's Quest channel. And in a regular season, uh, we're beginning to, we've been beginning to have coverage on the Discovery Quest channel with, with live racing. In a typical season, that will be four races. So looking at how that would have uh, panned out for, for 2020. So we'd expect a couple of races also to feature live free-to-air coverage as well to ensure no one misses out. Well, we're talking to the teams and again, we're trying to just tweak the weekend a little bit to make it easier for them with resources. Obviously, it's a challenging time for people to maintain the staff that's required to go to, to events. Uh, so we think the, the, the format will be, you know, the teams will typically um, position the truck late on, on Thursday, but to uh, delay running on Friday until Friday afternoon to allow team members to arrive on, on Friday morning to do some of the, the necessary setup with a rollout on Friday afternoon with a free practice session and then a second session on uh, Saturday morning. 
then an earlier qualifying slot of lunchtime and, and slim that down into a short, sharp 25 minute session uh, to get the grid for race one. Then race one was set off about four o'clock on, on Saturday and probably um, a couple of laps less than a regular distance to create a bit of a different race with a different character. Um, take some of the questions of tire management out so it'll be a, uh, an absolute um, you know, shootout type race. Uh, and of course, all our races, uh, the, the race fastest lap set the grid for the subsequent races in the programme. So that's going to be an interesting angle. So with regards to the, um, all the supporting championships, for example, Quattro Group British Supersport, the Pirelli National Superstock, the Molson Sidecars, Junior Supersport, Ducati Triathlon Cup, and of course our British Talent Cup, um, all those races we are scheduling to be on the new uh, format of uh, six race weekends. Um, we're, we're redistributing those races uh, proportionately, so you're going to see a mix of everything every weekend. Uh, so uh, there will be something for everyone.